let's go uh, about uh, 20 years back in your life. Right. When you started getting, get, getting these revelations and the, the psychic told you these things and you right. started researching by yourself right. and you start talking about it. How was it, uh, how, how was it to deal with your family and your friends and your surroundings and, I mean, the ridicule that so many people are going to face? Uh, I, I have experienced in my own way because of different circumstances. How did you uh, act upon this? And how was it? Well, pretty much, you know, when you are faced with a tidal wave hitting you almost overnight, um, you just have to deal with what you are faced with because it's almost not a case of uh, I'm going to say this and, and this might be the consequence because I went on a primetime chat show called The Wogan Show in 1991 and in 15, 16 minutes became instantly the most ridiculed man possibly in British bloody history. I couldn't go anywhere without being laughed at. I couldn't go to a bar or anything like that. They'd just uproar. Um, a comedian just had to say my name, no joke necessary to get a laugh. And it was just immediately I'd stepped into a completely different world because before that I was a respected television presenter and all that stuff. Um, and my family, to their credit, clearly did not understand anything that was going on. And, and neither did I. My life had just changed dramatically. And the status quo was now not an option. The old life was over. All bridges were burned back to there. Uh, but to their great, great credit, um, they stuck with me because they were my children and, and, and I was their husband. And uh, a lot of people would have walked away. And when you ask the question there about friends, a lot of friends did walk away. I mean, that it was like, oh, I didn't really know him. I didn't really know him, you know. Um, but I came to the very strong feeling um, that for some reason, this mass ridicule I was going through was not happening by accident. There was a reason for it happening. Um, and I concluded that I was going to keep going with this despite all the enormous ridicule because I just instinctively, intuitively felt it was going somewhere. In terms of my family, I, I, I came to the point where I thought, when, when, when they leave the body, they are going to understand, this is back 21 years ago, um, they are going to understand why all this happened. I don't have to uh, concentrate and focus on trying to explain to them why it's happening now. Um, I, I, I'm just going to go with this and see where it goes. But what has happened 21 years later is that events have unfolded and, and my family at that time were still absolutely with me, all of them. Um, they have now seen why that happened with the passage of time. And it may sound strange that a period of mass, massive ridicule, um, and ridicule of your children at school as well, they went through that a lot more than I realized at the time, um, is an important part of your life that you wouldn't change. But it's true because of this reason. We, um, when I say we, I mean the, the mind-body level of us goes through a symbolic journey from the womb to what we call death. It's just leaving this world, that's all. Which is, uh, if, if you like, symbolic of going a river going from the source to the sea. The mind can only see at any point in time the next turn on the river. This is the thinking level that's trying to work it out, what's happening now, which, which channel do I go down in the maze next, and all this stuff. But there's another level of us, which I call consciousness, the infinite part of us, that actually can see the journey from source to sea. And what is a, a terrible thing happening to mind here is actually to consciousness an essential, essential experience that's leading to these great things here. And Although I experienced all the ridicule without realizing why, I just knew there was a reason for it, but I didn't know why. Um, now I look back and I see why. 
it's because as the years have unfolded and I've followed the um, trail of information, it's taken me into places where I'm talking about reptilian entities manipulating human society, the fact that they, they have the, the ability to move between human and reptilian form. In the last 18 months, I've been looking at the fact that the moon's not what we think it is and is actually having a fundamental effect on human awareness in a technological uh, calculated way, that without being cleared out here of the prison that most people live in, which is the fear of what other people think, by that mass ridicule. Because when I went through it, either I was going to disappear from society and just hide, or I was going to come out and say, laugh, this is me. If you don't like it, do the other thing, but this is me. And that's what I did. And so having been through the most intense, extreme levels of ridicule over many years in the 90s, um, what would to most people be, I'm not going to talk about reptilian entities, what will people think of me? Oh, I'm not saying the moon's not real, what people think of To me, not a problem. There's, my criteria for what I communicate is, do I think it's true? That's it. Do I have the, have I passed that line where I know this is true? Um, or at least the theme of it's true. Um, yes, okay, so it goes out there. There's no, oh, but what will people think of me? Because of that, I don't care. And it, it, it means that there is no censorship, uh, no editing of what uh, information I put together on the basis of whether I think people will see me in a certain light. I don't care. They, they have every right to see me as they want. And it's this um, free-flowing information um, guided, um, information criteria guided uh, journey of communication that is absolutely essential because the world that we're experiencing is so dramatically different to that which we think we're experiencing that if you have any preconceived idea or belief system um, to protect or to um, influence your sense of what is, then forget it. You are simply not going to, um, you're not going to let the information be the guide. You're letting preconceived idea or belief system be the guide or protecting your belief system uh, being the guide. For instance, um, in places like the United States, there are very large numbers of people who are investigating this global uh, enslavement of humanity, um, but only on, in, in certain areas um, like banking scams and engineered wars and engineered terrorist events and control of the media and all this stuff because, and that's important, it's good, I'm not knocking it for a second, that's, we need to know about that. But this is far, far bigger than that and uh, the rabbit hole goes much deeper than that. And that they won't go any deeper in the rabbit hole. Because if they do, suddenly, A, their religious, often mostly Christian belief system is gonna be under threat, so they won't go there. And also, they're also looking that if I go any deeper in this rabbit hole and start talking about it, well, I'm gonna get laughed at and dismissed and all the rest of it, so I'm not going there, so I'm gonna stay at this level, which is fine and that's good and we need to know that. But we ain't gonna find answers to the enslavement of humanity when we're only willing to investigate and communicate that tangible level that uh, we can see, touch and taste. Because the see, touch and taste level of this is merely, if you like, it's the movie screen. It's the movie when it hits the screen. It's a done deal, it's happened. We've got to start investigating where this, where this projection is coming from that's manifesting as this um, global conspiracy, because it's much, much deeper than just men in dark suits sitting around the table discussing their next move, which is basically the level that these people investigate on. So that ridicule uh, period for me was absolutely crucial for what has followed.